Okay, here's the movable jaw, and I've already put a center line on it, but it's going to operate like this. Notice that it's extra high, at least an eighth of an inch high, because this step in here is an eighth of an inch. And I want a little extra so I can trim it later. I, I like to have extra. Well, I told you that's an eighth of an inch, so there's the eighth of an inch. And this is set for, see if I set it right. No, I gotta set the other gauge. Well, since this is a quarter inch, then the distance from here to here is three-eighths of an inch. And I have the gauge set for that. So you can see here that what I'm going to mill off is this here and this here. There's not really very much to be milled off. And if anything, I would like to have a little bit extra here in the middle so that I can trim it for an exact fit into here. And I believe we talked about that before, that it's about, what, 255 approximately. And I've got this laid off at 250, so I'll stay a little bit away from the line. And I'm going to dial it in using the DRO. Now, although I use a DRO, Many of you do not have that, and that all can certainly be done by just dialing in with your, your uh, graduated dials on your cranks. And that's the way I did it for 40 years until they invented the DRO, so it can be done. Okay, I'm at the Bridgeport mill now. The jaw is in the vise, and I'm getting ready to mill here. But I'm doing a setup here with the edge finder. And I know you're thinking, well, why do you bother to even make a layout when you're using your digital readout? But I'm just showing you different ways of doing this. And some of you perhaps do not have a DRO and have to follow layout lines. But this is a half inch diameter edge finder. And I will find the edge in the usual manner. Now I'm right on the edge with the spindle and I've zeroed out the DRO. Since this is half inch and the cutter is half inch, then the cutter is on the edge. You can also bypass this and just use the uh, touch off, but that puts a little nick in the work, so that's why I'm not doing that. Now let me put the cutter in. Now with the cutter in, and I'm watching the digital readout. I'm moving in 375 thousandths, but I think I'll make it 370. Give myself just a little bit of a wiggle room there. So I'm at 370. I'm locking in the X axis. Now I can touch off. And some of you are going to question how accurate this is, this is, but I just gently bring the quill down until I feel the cutter touching. I back it off, and remember I want to um, <clears throat> cut eighth of an inch off, so I'm going to raise the table by 125 thousandths, maybe 128, I'll make it. By calculations, I determined that I'm at the edge of the work over on the other side, and my readout uh, indicates 1.500. So there I am, and I need to then move in, what was it, 0.375, but I'm going to only move in 365, take a cut, and then I'm going to measure and determine how, how much more I have to take off. 
So over I move uh, 375. Sharp cutter. All right, I'm going to mic this, and I took one more cut off camera. But when I mic this, I'm getting. 258. So I need to take off oh about six thousandths. And this should be the last pass. I'm very hesitant to take the work out until I make sure that it fits, but there's no way for me to, to check that while it's still in the vise because of all kinds of interferences. But remember here that I was getting uh, on this measurement just a little over 250, about 252 or 3, and I'm essentially getting the same here. So I'm going to take just a couple more thousands off and then I'm going to take it out and hopefully hopefully it'll fit. I do not want to have to mess around with, with files or anything like that because that will also make it inaccurate. Okay, out it comes. Ah, perfection. Very little wiggle, and it slides from end to end. Next, I'm going to make that little bottom support, is what it's called on the drawing. And it's just eighth inch thick material, steel, 1.100 thousandths long. That isn't too critical. This is just a little bit over an inch. It's going to slide in here, and I didn't have any 3 8 wide, so I'm going to mill this down to uh, just a little less than 3 8 so it'll slide freely in that slot. And then there's just a hole to drill in that. There it is, 3 8 wide. I'll draw a center line. And I already found the middle, the other direction, so if I may, I'll drill a hole to accommodate an 832 screw, I believe it is, which is a number 20, according to the drawing. You know what, I just used this little vise here is a drill press vise, and that's the inaugural run, I might say. Let me deburr that, and you can see that holds that little button head screw. You can use any kind of screw you like. I happen to like the appearance of a button head, and I had one in stock, 832. I'm going to transfer that hole right now, and notice that I have a piece of cardstock on each side of it, just to split the difference there because I really don't want that that shim or that little uh, piece of steel to ride on the sides I want it to ride on the bottom you could but it's just more work to get it to fit there's my transfer punch if I can get it in there okay now I finally got it in place And that's ready to drill, and according to the drawing, that is going to be an 832 tap, but I need to drill it, well, it doesn't say on the drawing. 
I guess they don't put that on drawings anymore, but on the drawings that I made back when I was in my prime, we used to put the tap drill size on. So hang on while I look. And it is... Well, it'll take me a minute to find that. All right, that's to be a number 29 drill. 3 8 deep. Now don't drill any of these holes uh, deeper than you need to. There's a reason for their depth there, and in this case we don't want one hole to interfere with the other. I'll do that off camera and then tap that 832. Mission accomplished here, but notice uh, looking at it from this view here that I have a bit of a gap right where these pieces of paper are. And if you recall earlier, I was planning on that or suspecting that that could happen and I'd a lot rather have the extra now because I can mill that off than not enough and have to do some major rework so at a, at a later time perhaps tomorrow I'll take the draw out and take well really just the thickness of this whatever that cardstock is off of the bottom that is the portion that I just uh, drilled and tapped but it is now ready to drill and tap this hole. And I'll hold that in the milling machine and I'll have a clamp right there where my fingers are holding it tightly against the body of the vise and up this way. And I'll drill through here and into the jaw to whatever depth it called for here in the drawing. Now, I've had quite enough fun for today, so I'm going to quit and uh, call it a day. See you tomorrow. Howdy, it's the next day, and I have uh, chucked up that jaw, and I'm going to take five thousandths off because I have determined the thickness of the cardstock is five thousandths. should have a good fit when I reassemble it.